Hello learners, welcome to this video lesson. Today we are going to discuss another important topic of your online course. Uh, the title of our today's discussion is Normal Probability Curve, its concept and characteristics. Uh, so friends, as you know, uh, we are presently uh, in the 16th week, the last week of your online course and uh, we are studying the 16th module of this online course. Uh, the title of the module is the nature of distribution and its interpretation. In this module, two video lessons are there, two major content points uh, are there. One is normal probability curve, its concept and characteristics. Today we are going to discuss this concept. And the second title is application of normal probability curve, how we can apply normal probability curve in different situations. So friends, uh, before starting discussion, uh, let me to say that uh, this module is focused upon nature of distribution and its interpretation. As you know, uh, if I will ask that you are a teacher, your work is to teach the learners at the same time to assess the performance of the learners, to know their progress, then accordingly to interpret the performance based result of the learners. So how you are doing and, and if I will ask you whether uh, the result that you are uh, getting, if it is in terms of marks, can you say that uh, uh, you know, the students to whom you are dealing in your class are homogeneous in nature, not at all. They are not homogeneous in nature, they are rather heterogeneous in nature. So far as their interests, their abilities, their intelligence, their creativity, their personality and other, their self-concept self -concept and other mental traits are concerned, you can say that all students, all learners are different. Okay. So though it seems so far as their age is concerned, so far as their uh, standard or class is concerned, it is just like homogeneous. But, but if you will go through, if you will compare their abilities and from different backgrounds from where they are coming, okay, from different diverse backgrounds, from different social backgrounds from where they are coming and at the same time uh, from different mental traits, we can say that, uh, you know, the group is not at all, uh, you know, a, a, a homogeneous group, rather uh, it is definitely a heterogeneous group. And friends, when we say that the group is heterogeneous, then definitely we should find out whether the group is a normal group or not, or not. Okay, because that depends upon the nature of distribution. Many a time we find that if you if you consider any mental trait, it may be achievement, it may be intelligence. Uh, certain criteria are there, and uh, uh, you know certain features are there, certain characteristics are there. Basing upon the characteristics, you can say that the group is a normal group or quite often a time you will find that the group is also not normal. Okay, So that's why keeping in consideration of such type of interpretation about the group, about the nature of distribution of the performance of the learners in your class, we are focusing upon uh, you know two different concepts to understand what is a normal distribution what is a normal probability curve and how can the concept of normal probability curve be used in the teaching learning process for analyzing and interpreting the result of the students. Let us go forward. Uh, today in this topic, uh, we have certain learning outcomes and uh, I am very much hopeful that after going through this video lesson, at the same time, after going through the part content of this module, you will be able to explain the concept of normal distribution and normal probability curve. And further, you will be able to discuss the need of a normal distribution and you will be able to explain the characteristics of a normal, normal probability curve. To whom or to what type of curve we can say that it is a normal curve and what are the features and characteristics of that normality that also will discuss. And further, you will be able to illustrate various divergence in the normal curve. I was just talking, uh, talking earlier that how a curve or how a distribution is deviate from normality. And when a distribution is deviate from normality, 
then what type of distribution it is. So that's why this is also another learning outcome of today's video lesson. And further, another learning outcome is you will be able to discuss the significance of skewness and kurtosis in the educational measure measurement and evaluation. So I was talking about the divergence from the normality. So when divergence from normality is there, then definitely we get two types of curve. One is called uh, called as the skewed curve, and other is called as a curve like kurtosis. Further, we will discuss that what is skewedness and what is kurtosis. So here today we will also discuss the significance of skewness and cotonis and also its interpretation. We will try to achieve these learning outcomes after today's discussion. Now let us come forward to discuss about to understand the concept of a normal distribution. So friends, if we measure any variable for a large number of time, uh, we will find that they observe a definite pattern or symmetry. Okay, so uh, if you we'll, if you we'll take a group of sample, okay, from a population, and and if you we'll conduct a study frequently, number of times, taking many sample, and and the result and that sample we should collect, we should select by using any random method, by using any probability method. Uh, and that sample, a test will be developed and the test will be administered upon that sample and it may be related to a test of achievement, a test of creativity, a test of uh, intelligence or aptitude. You will find that the result that you are getting, if, if you are following a normal curve and large number of uh, times you are testing it, you are verifying it. Uh, you will find the scores that you are getting, that score is a type of normal distribution, okay. And you will, uh, and if you will make a curve taking the score, you will find, a, 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 you will find a definite pattern and that pattern will be a symmetrical pattern, that is called as a normal probability curve. So when the data is normal uh, and, and if you plot that data, uh, for making uh, a frequency polygon, then definitely you will find a symmetrical curve. Further, we will discuss. Uh, I was just talking about on plotting a graph of this measurement, you will find uh, the distribution to be a symmetrical distribution. Okay, that is called as a normal distribution curve or normal probability curve. Uh, such distributions which are perfectly symmetrical and follow the laws of nature are called normal distribution that is in which the left half is a mirror image of the right half means the curve that you will get uh, if you compare the left curve left side curve and the right side curve you can say that uh, uh, it is exactly two half of the normal distribution or of the normal dist normal probability curve and again uh, mean median uh, uh, and if uh, it is a, a unimodal class, mean, median and mode have the same value if it is a normal distribution, if it is a normal probability curve. So the value of mean, median and mode will be same. Just like you see now on your screen, uh, I have taken one example of normal distribution. Uh, in the first column, class interval is given. And in the second column, certain tally marks are there, means how many students or how many subjects are there in each class. And, and in column 3, in the third column, frequencies are uh, mentioned. Total number of frequencies are 150. So taking 150 students or 50 subjects here, basing upon their score, uh, class interval, certain groups, this has been arranged this has, uh, this has been developed in certain class, class intervals and frequencies are tally marked also. And here you see mostly this is a type of symmetrical curve because the highest score is here one you see in the top extre extreme and at the bottom extreme uh, here also the number of frequencies one. Then uh, next is two here is also two next four here four and and if you will if you will go through if you will go through uh, you know, uh, uh, if you we'll prepare a graph, taking this score, you will get a type of such type of graph, a symmetrical graph. Okay, that means 
most of the frequencies here you see 30, 20 and 20. Most of the frequencies it falls at the middle of the uh, graph and, and slowly there is a curve in both the directions. At the positive direction that is at the right side and at the negative direction that is at the left side. So, uh, if the data is a normal distribution then the curve you will get such type of curve. You can see on your screen now. Uh, uh, this is a figure, this is a graph. The frequencies, y axis are the frequencies and x axis, uh, you know, the class intervals or the scores are presented in the x axis. And you see the middle, the middle portions, there is a peak at the middle portion, and, and you, will, you, you will find a type of this type of a symmetrical curve. This is called as a normal probability curve. Uh, to understand more about the characteristics of a normal probability curve, let me to say that uh, a normal curve is a symmetrical curve. Okay, uh, the normal distribution curve is a symmetrical curve around the mean. That is, if you draw a curve with mean as a variant, then the number of cases above the mean value and number of cases below the mean value will be equal. That means. When you will calculate if it is a symmetrical distribution, a normal distribution and symmetrical curve, and if you will calculate the mean value, you will find that number of observations or number of frequencies at the left side will be exactly same in the in the right side. Okay, so that because because this is a normal distribution, that that means the mean, median, and mode will fall at the middle point, at the middle portion of the distribution. And, and if you draw a perpendicular line from the highest peak of the symmetrical curve to the baseline, you will find that uh, the perpendicular line will equally divide the area of the curve into two equal halves. Okay, so that's why that's why uh, the mean value of the distribution will equally divide uh, uh, the distribution into two parts. It is not only equal number of cases, but even the distribution on either side that is below and above the mean value will be equal. Then further, the curve will be symmetrical around the vertical axis. I have already said that if you draw a perpendicular line from the top, from the top of the highest peak, from the top of the curve to the baseline, then you will find that, uh, you know, uh, you will find the curve will be two equal part. It implies that the side shape and slope of the curve on one side of the curve is identical to the other side. So here you see I am just focusing upon the size, shape as well as the slopeness, the slope of the curve. So you will find that exactly the slope, the extent of slope in both the sides, both in both at the right side as well as at the left side you will find that equally this is sloped and the shape and size is also equal. In other words, the left and right values to the middle central point are a mirror image. So, it will just like a mirror image. Okay. So, that means two equal part you will find if you will make, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, if you will just consider uh, uh, the left side figure and the right side figure in a normal probability curve. You see now it is visible on your screen, you will find a such type of curve which is a purely symmetrical curve and here you see both the lines, both the extreme of the normal curve, it does not touches the baseline. It means this is a type of imaginary curve, it is a type of mathematical curve and it never touches the baseline. And here you see the mean, median and mode, it falls exactly at the midpoint. That means if you draw a perpendicular line from the highest point of the curve to the baseline, you will find that exactly it will divide the area of the curve into two equal parts. It means at the right side you will find 50 percentage of the cases lie and at the left side you will also find that 50 percentage of the cases lie. And again let me to say that why the two extreme, two extreme point of the curve, it never touches the baseline. It means uh, we use when we use the normal probability curve for plotting or for interpreting 
for analyzing the mental trait, it may be achievement, intelligence, or other types of score. We cannot say that there is zero measurement. There is zero measurement. Okay, that's why we 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 measure it by using the equal interval scale. So that's why we can't say that there is zero intelligence. We can't say that there is zero achievement. We can't say that there is zero creativity. Okay, zero aptitude. So that's why so far as mental measurement is concerned, you will find that some extent of trait is always there with the individual. So that's why it may be very high excellent or it may be very poor, but but that will never touch the baseline because you can't say that there is the existence of zero intelligence or zero achievement so far as uh, you know uh, the performance and other mental trait the uh, mental trait of the learners are concerned so you will find a such type of perfectly symmetrical curve uh, where the uh, where both the lines both the extremes are not touching the baseline and further to discuss more about the characteristics of a normal probability curve, we can say that the normal curve is a mathematical curve. This is also a type of hypothetical or imaginary curve, which looks like a bell shape. Here you see this curve is just like a bell shaped curve. It is also called as a bell shaped curve. And the right side of the curve is called as the positive side, and the left side curve is called as the negative side. It means here you see infinite it extend towards the infinite at the positive side plus infinite and it is minus infinite uh, at the negative side it also it also extend the uh, curve also extend till infinite okay it never touches the baseline further uh, to understand more about characteristics of a normal probability curve we can say that side step and slope of the curve on one side is identical to the side shape and slope of the curve in the other side i have already discussed the values of mean median and mode uh, if mode uh, if it is a unimodal distribution computed from a normal distribution or uh, or those following the normal distribution curve always coincide at the same point and have the same value it means the mean value the mode value as well as the value of median will be the exactly same and further uh, to discuss more about the characteristics of a normal probability curve, we can say that the height of the normal curve is maximum at the midpoint or the mean value. We can say that the height of the vertical axis drawn from the peak, that's called ordinate, is maximum at the mean and, and the unit normal curve, its value is equal to uh, 0 0.39. 89 and further we can say that the first and the third quartile that is q1 is the first quartile we have already discussed quartile deviation and q3 is the third quartile q1 q first quartile that is q1 is a point below which 25 percentage of the cases lie and above which 75 percentage of the cases lie then accordingly q3 is a point of the distribution below which 75 percentage of the cases lie and above which 25 percentage of the cases lie so here the first and the third quartile are are equidistance from the mean or median in a normal distribution okay so that means we can say q3 minus median is equal to median minus q1 median is the midpoint and and if you subtract the value of median from the value of the third quartile that will be exactly similar exactly same if you subtract the value of uh, first quartile that is q1 from the median value okay so this is only possible if the distribution is normal just like here you see at the right side q3 will come at the right side because because total area of the curve imaginary it is considered as 100 percent 100 percent and q3 is a point uh, uh, you know uh, above which 25 percentage of the cases lie this is uh, this area and and below which 75 percentage of the cases lie and q1 is a point below which 25 percent and above which 75 percentage of the cases lie and the median will be the midpoint so that's why distance from q3 to median is exactly same 
the distance of q distance uh, of q1 distance from q1 to median okay and this is possible if the curve is exactly normal and for the so far as area of a normal probability curve is concerned here you see the entire curve is divided into six different standard deviations okay just like it starts from zero uh, then plus one standard distance plus two standard distance and plus three standard distance as per the norm and at the negative side minus one standard distance minus two minus two standard distance and minus three standard distance so friends here uh, left side is the negative side and right side is the positive side so here negative side doesn't mean that the value of the score is minus the value of score is less than the mean and at the positive side value of the score is positive but that is more than that is above the mean score so that's why it is called as the positive side okay so here you see uh, the entire area of the curve which is divided into six different standard uh, deviations and beyond plus three standard distance and uh, uh, you know beyond minus three standard distance you will find that some areas are left because i have already said that uh, you know the the two extreme line of the curve it never touches the baseline and you will find that most of the scores because highest peak is at the center so most of the frequencies it falls in between plus one to minus one standard distance okay and then after you will find that the frequencies are slowly slowly reducing both at the positive side as well as the negative side now let us try to understand uh, the area of a normal probability curve in percentage i have already said that the total area of the curve is 100 percentage and and you see in this curve if you observe minutely this curve is divided into six different standard deviations it's from the middle it starts from zero and and you see from zero to plus one standard distance and from zero to minus one standard distance you will find 34.13 percentage of the cases lie both zero to plus one 30 34.13 percentage and zero from zero to minus one standard distance is also 34.13 percentage of the cases then again from plus one to plus two 13.59 then minus 1 to minus 2 standard distance that is also 13.59 and from plus 2 standard distance to plus 3 standard distance 2.15 and minus 2 standard distance to minus 3 standard distance is also again 2.15 percent and in both the extreme at positive extreme beyond plus 3 standard distance that is 0 0.13 percentage of the cases lie and less than minus 3 standard distance again 0 0.13 percentage cases lies so that means if i will say that uh, in between plus 3 standard distance to minus 3 standard distance you will find 99.774 percentage of the cases lie and beyond plus 3 less than minus 3 standard distance only 0.26 percentage of the cases lie it's 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 very negligible but it will never zero and for the between plus two standard distance to minus two standard distance you will find 99.44 percentage of the cases lie and between plus one to minus one you will find that 68.26 percentage of the cases lie so if the total cases is 100 percent you are getting here in between plus one to minus one standard distance uh, uh, you know uh, 68.26 percentage of the cases lie it means the majority the majority of the cases or or the average performance or uh, you can say the abilities of the learners if it is a normal probability curve you will find that most of the learners will fall at the average just below the average and above the average that means they are centered to the average and very few percentage of the cases you will find at both the extreme okay it may be in the positive extreme and at the negative extreme means at the average you will find more number of subjects will come and and uh, so far as superior ability and inferior ability you will find that few uh, uh, you know subjects or few number of students will come friends now let us focus upon after discussing the characteristics of a normal probability curve uh, and also its areas the importance of normal probability curve in teaching learning process in assessing result of the students are just like number of evidences are accumulated 
to show that uh, normal distribution provides a good fit or, or describe the frequencies of occurrence of many variable and facts such as biological statistics if we'll observe the sex ratio in birds in a country over a number of years you will find that uh, the data will support just like the normal probability curve the distribution will normal and and so far as anthropometrical data is concerned and if you we'll plot uh, if you we'll consider and analyze if you we'll interpret the data relating to height and weight of individual of the population you will also find that the distribution is somehow normal and further the ways and output of large number of workers in the same occupation under a comparable condition you will find also it is a type of or it will create a type of normal distribution and for the psychological measurement is concerned just like intelligence achievement adjustment uh, anxiety self concept creativity aptitude and other uh, mental traits are concerned psychological uh, variables are concerned you will find that uh, uh, you know uh, the score that you will get that is a type of normal distribution so so for analyzing such type of data we should understand the concept of normal distribution and how can we interpret it and further the normal distribution is of great value in educational evaluation mental measurement okay and for the normal distribution is not an actual distribution i have already said that this is a type of hypothetical and mathematical model the distribution of test scores approach the theoretical normal distribution as a limit but the fit is rarely ideal and perfect so this is the type of imaginary line but but many a time you can say you can say that it will exactly the symmetrical or exactly uh, you know uh, uh, normal but more or less it is normal then now let us focus upon divergence from normality how a curve is is uh, is deviate from the norm of normality just like there may be distributions which may be different uh, different than normal uh, that's called as asymmetrical that's not a symmetrical asymmetrical an asymmetrical curve may be a skewed curve or a kurtosis like curve so we'll try to understand that what is skewedness and what is kurtosis a curve which is highly skewed either at the positive side or at the negative side are called as a, a skewed curve and at the same time a highly peaked or more flattened curve which is called as a kurtosis which is not a normal curve so let us try to understand what is skewness and what is kurtosis the skewness can be defined as a divergence of asymmetry of a distribution around its mean skewness quantifies how symmetrical the distribution is a symmetrical distribution has a skewness value of 0 okay so if you we'll say that a, a, a you know a, a, a distribution is a symmetrical distribution or a normal distribution you will find that the value of skewness will be 0 and if the value of skewness is not zero you can say that this is a normal distribution rather that is a skewed distribution two distributions have the same mean let two uh, mean score of two distribution is 20 and standard deviation 5 but you can say that uh, you know the two distributions are the normal distribution because so far as spread of score is concerned and nature of data is concerned it may be different so that's why one may be a skewed curve and other may be it may be a positive skewed or it may be a negative skewed but but there is the possibility that the mean and standard deviation value of a positive skewed curve or a negative skewed curve is equal but but uh, both the curve or both the distribution is not, not normal one may be symmetrical distribution but on the other may not be a symmetrical distribution and further skewedness may be a positive may be towards the positive direction or towards the negative direction so we can say that there is the possibility of positive skewedness and there is also possibility of negative skewedness here you see positive skewedness means the curve is skewed towards the positive direction towards the right direction and it is highly peaked at the left side at the negative side 
so if you are getting such type of curve then you can say that it is a positive skewed curve okay it means it means the value of a median the value of a median is uh, uh, you know the value of a mean is more than the value of median so far as a positive skewed curve is concerned and again in a negative skewedness uh, you will find such type of curve just like here you see uh, uh, you know uh, 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 the uh, curve is skewed towards the negative direction highly skewed towards uh, on the left side that means the negative direction and here you can say the value of mean is more than the median okay and two types of curve uh, there is the possibility to get two types of curve one is the positive skewed curve and other is called as the negative skewed curve and now let us focus upon kurtosis so here kurtosis means there may be three types of curve uh, 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 that may not be a, 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 a in three types of curve uh, many a time you will find that the curve is not a normal curve so what are the different three types of curve one is called as a leptocritic, other is called as a platycritic, and the third is called as a mesocritic. A leptocritic curve that means which is more peaked curve than normal, and a platycritic curve which is more flattened curve than normal, and a mesocritic curve which is moderately peaked and not highly flattened. Okay, a moderate curve is always called as a mesocritic curve, and that is the normal distribution and that is the normal probability curve but a leptocritic and a platycritic is not a normal distribution curve just like now let us try to understand with this uh, figure here you see the middle curve which is moderately peaked and not more flattened that's called as a mesocritic is a normal curve and the value of a mesocritic and normal uh, probability curve uh, is 0.263 it is the high the height is 0.263 but a leptocritic curve is highly peaked than normality and a platycritic curve is more flattened than the normality. The value of leptocritic will be less than 0.263 and the value of uh, platycritic is more than 0.263. Okay, so this is the normal curve, the middle one and the top one is leptocritic and, and the more flattened curve is called as the platycritic curve. So there is the possibility to get such type of curve and now let us focus upon significance of skewness and kurtosis here you see when we select a sample uh, uh, selection of the subject can uh, produce skewness and kurtosis in the distribution if the sample size is small or sample is biased one you are using by using the non probability uh, uh, method of sampling then you will find a curve which is uh, you can say uh, uh, that curve, uh, uh, that distribution may be a skewed distribution. The, uh, the distribution that you will get, you will not get a normal distribution. And further, uh, uh, it is unsuitable or properly or poorly made test. Just like if the measuring tool of test is inappropriate for the group on which, uh, which it has been administered or poorly made the asymmetry is likely to occur in the distribution of scores if the test is not properly developed. So that means you will find that the score that you will get, you will not find a normal, uh, um, a normal distribution like score. So that's why a asymmetry like curve we will get. And uh, if a test is too easy, scores will be pile off at the high end of the scale, fair edge. Uh, when the test is too difficult, score will pile up at the low end of the scale. And here also you will find, uh, you know, uh, the curve which is, which is like a type of skewness or kurtosis. You will not find a normal curve. And again, the threat, if the threat, uh, you know, uh, being measured is, no, is, no, is non-normal. Okay, so that's why just like skewness or kurtosis will appear. When there is a real lack of normality in the threat being measured, just like interest or attitude, because it changes. So far as achievement, intelligence, that is some extent you can find a normal curve, but so far as attitude and interest is concerned, uh, it's, it's difficult to get, uh, you know, a normal distribution. And further, there is the possibility of errors uh, in the construction and administration of the test just like unclear in a instruction while administering the test 
error in timing, error in scoring practice and lack of motivation to complete the test. So, these are also some of the factors because of that skewness and kurtosis may arise. That means, deviate from the norm of normality may be possible. So, friends, just to recapitulate, today we discuss the concept of normal distribution, the concept of normal probability curve and the total area of the normal probability curve and, and uh, the nature of the distribution and further we have also focused upon uh, how a curve is deviate from normality. In terms of kurtosis, in terms of skewness, we have developed, we have discussed uh, uh, you know, we have compared it uh, with the normal probability curve and also we have discussed about the need of a normal distribution, the importance of a normal distribution and, and the significance of the scores of uh, significance of uh, a skewed like curve or a kurtosis like curve and what are the uh, situations that when we get such type of curve. In our next session, we will discuss uh, you know, the applications of normal probability curve. For your further queries, you can write to me niradhar at ignu.sc.in. You can make me a telephone call. My intercom is 2994. You can visit my Facebook account, my YouTube channel. The name of my channel is Transforming Education. And you can also visit my Twitter handle. You will find many such video lessons are there relating to education, relating to your online course and other popular theme on education that will help you a lot for your studies. Thank you.